In this video, we're going to go through a few examples of calculating equilibrium constants. So in a previous video, in a previous lecture, we looked at um, the law of mass action and we introduced the concept of the equilibrium constant, right? Um, so in this video, I want to use those that concept and that, those expressions in order to actually calculate these values for the equilibrium constant. So let's look at this first example problem. So it says for the reaction, right? So it gives you NO gas plus H2 um, is in a reversible reaction with uh, nitrogen gas and water vapor. It says it is determined that at equilibrium at a particular temperature, the concentrations are as follows. And it gives you all of the equilibrium concentrations for each of the species. And it asks you to calculate the value of the equilibrium constant for the reaction at this temperature, right? So first thing we have to note is that this reaction is unbalanced, right? We got one nitrogen here, two there. So we have to balance this reaction first. So let's do that before we, before we start to do anything else. So first we want to balance the reaction. All right, so when it's balanced, you'll have 2NO gas plus 2H2 gas reversible process that yields N2 gas plus 2H2O gas. Okay, so that's our balanced chemical equation, right? So we're able to use stoichiometric coefficients to balance this guy. Um, the other thing that I wanna note is that this will be a homogeneous equilibrium, right? We will have all gases at equilibrium. So this would be a homogeneous equilibrium here. Okay, so now that we have the uh, the balanced chemical equation, we want to write out the uh, the equilibrium constant expression, right? So we want to write out an expression for K. So building up an expression for the equilibrium constant. So again, here K, our equilibrium constant is just going to be uh, the concentration of the products uh, over the concentration of the reaction, reactants, right? The product of the concentration of the products over the product of the concentration of the reactants. So, uh, so let's do that. So we have the concentration of N2 times the concentration of H2O squared, right? That is gonna be squared because we have this two in the stoichiometric coefficient, right? over NO squared times H2 squared. Okay, so this gives us an expression for the equilibrium constant. So now all we have to do is plug in the values that we've been given and then solve, right? So we were given the concentration for each of these guys at equilibrium. All we have to do is plug in those values and solve in order to solve this problem. So uh, concentration for N2 is given here, right? So we got 5.3 times 10 to the negative two molar times our concentration for H2, which is gonna be 2.9 times 10 to the negative third molar squared over the concentration for NO, it's gonna be 8.1 times 10 to the negative three molar squared times uh, the concentration for H2, which is gonna be 4.1 times 10 to the negative five molar. That is again squared. Okay, so when you plug all of these in, you get a final value of 4.04 times 10 to the six, right? So this would be your equilibrium constant. Pretty big number, right? That's a pretty large number there. Um, we need to talk a little bit about how we can interpret what these values mean for the equilibrium, right? So we we get this huge number, right? Let, let's let's kind of take a step back and and look at this expression, right? Keep in mind here in the numerator, we got the concentrations for the products, and here we have our concentration for the reactants. 
right? So given that this is a ratio and it's always gonna be a positive number since uh, these concentrations will always be positive. So, um, so there's a couple different ways we can interpret K, right? K can either be greater than one, K can be less than one, or the rare scenario where K is equal to one, right? Because it's gonna be a ratio. Um, so K is either gonna be much greater than one, much less than one, or it's gonna be equal to one. If K is greater than one, given the form of this equation, that means that the equilibrium favors the products. This just means that the concentration of the products is gonna be much higher at equilibrium than the concentration of the reactants. And the opposite is true if K is less than one. If K is less than one, then it's going to favor the reactants, right? So we say that equilibrium favors the reactants, right? Because it's in the denominator. If it's in the denominator and it's much larger, then that means K is gonna be less than one. And in a rare um, scenario where you get one that's actually like exactly equal to one, uh, then you just say that it has no favorability. Right, but this is a fairly rare scenario. In most of the most cases, you're gonna end up with either a really large number, really small number, and you'll have to tell whether the reaction favors the uh, products or favors the reactants. And in this case, we get a number that's much, much greater than one, right? We get a huge number. So since K is much greater than one in this case, we're gonna say that this reaction favors the products. There's gonna be much more of our products in this case uh, than there will be of our reactants at equilibrium, right? So, so you know, not just calculating these values, how can we interpret them and make sense of them is, is, is the other thing that we wanna make sure we, we have here. So this is how you interpret these equilibrium constant values. Okay, so, um, so moving on to the next question. So this next problem says at a particular temperature, a three liter flask contains two moles of, 2.4 moles of chlorine, 1.0 moles of NOCl and 4.5 times 10 to the three moles of NO. Calculate K at this at uh, this temperature for the following reaction. It gives you the reaction there, right? So first off, again, we want to balance the chemical equation first. So balance reaction. Right, so if we balance this guy, then we get two NOCl gas reversible reaction yields 2NO gas plus CO2 gas, right? So that's our balanced equation. The next thing I wanna point out here is that you're not necessarily given explicitly the concentrations like you were given in this first problem, right? This first problem just straight out gives you the concentrations. But in this one, you're also given the concentrations, but you just have to calculate it. Uh, but you're given the number of moles of each of these gases and you're given the total volume of the container. So you have everything you need to solve for the, uh, the concentration of each one of these gas species. So let's do that. So we wanna calculate the concentrations. So calculate concentrations. So first let's do it for Cl2. That's the first one that we're given, right? So the concentration of Cl2 at equilibrium here is just gonna be 2.4 molar, or 2.4 moles, sorry, over the total volume, which is three liters. So that's gonna give us a concentration of 0 0.8 moles. Concentration of NO is gonna be equal to 4.5, times 10 to the negative three moles over three liters. That's gonna give us 1.5 times 10 to the negative three molar. And then last but not least, we got NOCL, which is coming in at one mole at equilibrium, right? Gave us one mole over three liters. So then that just gives us 0 0.33 molar. Okay, so we've calculated the concentration of each one of our species here, right? So now the next thing that we wanna do is write out an expression for K. So write expression 
for the equilibrium constant K, right? So if we're writing out our equilibrium constant, again here, homogeneous equilibrium of gases, so they'll all contribute to this change at equilibrium. So first is the products, right? So we got NO, concentration of NO squared times Cl2, concentration of Cl2, over the only reactant we have is NOCl. So we got NOCl's concentration squared here as well. Okay, cool. So now we can just plug in here and solve again, right? So for, uh, for the concentration of Cl2, we got 0 0.8 molar. And then the concentration of NO is gonna be 1.5 times 10 to the negative three molar. That one's gonna be squared over 0 0.33 molar, also squared. And so K is going to be 1.62 times 10 to the negative five, uh, not molar, <laughs> unitless quantity. So, um, okay, so this gives us 1.62 times 10 to the negative five for our equilibrium constant. Now, like we said in the beginning, right? Um, it is, uh, you know, depending on whether this is going to be greater than or less than one, that we make the decision of whether this favors the reactants or the products. In this case, K is much less than one, right? Much, much less than one. So this means that the reaction is going to favor the reactants, right? In this case, we get a process that favors the reactants, right? Because it's less than one, right? If it's greater than one, it favors the products. If it's less than one, favors the reactant. So this is one is definitely much less than one. So this is going to be a uh, process that favors the reactants. Okay, so those are two examples that cover calculating the equilibrium constant. Um, in the next video, we're gonna go through another example of calculating the equilibrium constant, except we're gonna relate it to the partial pressure of each gas rather than its individual concentration.